How's it going everyone? Tim here, Tier D Adventures. Hope everyone's all well there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. So today's video, we're going to do a little class one chassis shopping. We are freshly back from the Rocky Mountain Regional Championship hosted by Team Grajek. And we are actually down a rig now after coming back. Um, I ended up selling my class one uh, chassis while I was up there, um, which was the Kraft Chrome Works Razor's Edge chassis with the narrowed Hilux. Ended up selling the whole uh, rig to a good friend while I was up there. He's been looking at getting um, a good solid class one rolling for a long time and he knows how my truck drives and everything. And um, so he ended up taking that home with him. So it is at a good home and a very good friend. So now we don't have a class one currently. So let's do some chassis shopping. Maybe take a look at some chassis that I have laying around here and some other great class one chassis options out there. When it comes to class one chassis, what are we talking about with class one? For class one specific chassis generally, you are looking at chassis with a flat skid here and that have uh, chassis mounted servo options. Whether you're doing Sorka or not, almost every class one rules and regulations or event that I've been to, everyone requires the skid plate on the class one chassis to be flat. And then everyone requires class one to have a chassis mounted servo option. So those are two key things that you're looking for. Previously, before you needed to take into consideration material. Previously, Class 1 chassis needed to be metal, and they needed to have bolt-on or removable shock towers. Now, some places that may still be a thing, but if you are building or anything with the new Sorka rules, material is no longer considered, and shock towers are no longer required. So you can have carbon fiber chassis, G10, you can still have metal chassis, removable shock towers, you can have no shock towers. So that really opened up the world a lot for Class 1 chassis. The manufacturers, some manufacturers specifically make chassis in G10 and carbon fiber, so they never made a class one. Now that that's no longer a requirement, now they are able to also enter that class one game as well. Taking that into consideration, you know, what are some, you know, other things to look for with class one chassis or some things that I look for? So one key thing that I look for in class one chassis is belly clearance. I look and prefer for small belly sections, which is, you know, this section, that skid section. I Look for really small sections right there just for all that more clearance. And if any like hang up or break over that point, if you're, you know, your belly is this small, that's a lot less hang up area or slide area versus a longer extended belly and stuff like that. So take that into consideration. Wheelbase, you know, some chassis, there are sh chassis that are designed for specifically short wheelbase. And there are chassis that are that more suited for longer wheelbase and stuff like that. So that's kind of a personal preference, what you're looking for if you're looking to make a short wheelbase vehicle or go like the standard, like that 11.5, 11.8 area or go into like the 12.3 to 12.5 range, stuff like that. But for the most part, any of the chassis that I'm talking about here today, they accept a wide variety of wheelbases. So it's really not gonna matter, hinder you there uh, for the most part. Or another thing to even consider um, is a forward based chassis. Your standard like skid placement, you know, somewhere right here along the middle. Forward base is where that skid actually does come forward. So that skid is actually, it's not necessarily centered in the vehicle. It is forward. It is more towards the front axle. So you have shorter front links and stuff like that. And that forward base design really helps with breakover and stuff like that because you're getting all that breakover weight towards the front of the chassis. And in addition to those and belly clearance, one thing that I really like is like overall, you know, like an overall low profile of the chassis. I don't want a super tall chassis. I like to keep everything kind of like as low and tight as I can. Example right here on this GK chassis, everything's nice and low. You can get your shocks and everything mounted right here um, on the chassis itself. This also comes with some shock keys uh, that can help for just more additional shock placement, stuff like that. But overall, everything's nice, low profile. Everything's right there. You can get bodies right on top of there to keep everything low and tight. Of course, one important thing, you know, class one, if you are doing sork or anything like that, because class one, almost anyone I know that if they run any type of point systems, allow you to go after the full 60 points. So 60 points, getting that full 60, you're going to be looking for lots of stuff to get that one way is transfer case, whether it be an all included unit or like a typical Ford motor mount and TK setup. So one thing that I always look for is Ford motor mount compatibility, making sure the chassis can accept either standard, more common Ford motor mount setups like, like the Ford motor mount offered from Team Grajek or that they have their own Ford motor mount design. Jeff's way, I can have the Ford motor mount and the TK system. That way I'm able to get all those points towards my 60 when I'm building for a full class one. So what are some chassis that I have on my considered list and chassis that I have experience with? 
So first up here is the Brazen C1 Pro chassis. Now this is actually built, this setup here is actually built for class two. Um, this was uh, the kiddo's truck for a long time. So he was actually running a class one chassis versus class two. That's how good this chassis is overall. It has everything you need. It's got Ford motor mount uh, compatibility there with the Team Garage Act Ford motor mount or any of the custom ones more so like this one here from Squints RC. As you can see, we have that very, very small belly area, very small footprint right there. So um, that is definitely a winning benefactor um, on this chassis setup. So available in a couple materials here, like carbon fiber like this here, and as well as the aluminum. And in addition to Ford motor mount, obviously it can accept chassis mount servo and pan hard. So that would check all those boxes. And you can build this to a wide variety of links and everything like that, and it'll work great. Next couple chassis that were on there would be from Crop Carmworks. The Razor's Edge, which is what I was running previously um, for class one for quite some time and love the chassis. Great setup overall. Everything about the chassis worked for me. Um, I had great success with it. Had very solid class one finishes at most of the events I've uh, went to and along our local series. And then in addition to the Razor's Edge, Krupp Carmworks also offers the Katana chassis, which is the um, which is a carbon fiber chassis setup. Um, and overall measurements, everything like that, they are very, very similar. Just the Katana can, is available in a kit and everything like that. They they both have Ford motor mount and T-case options, whether it be Team Garage Tech or from Krupp Carmworks. They have their own uh, T-case and Ford motor mount set up for those. Chassis mount servo options, pan hard, and they have a really short belly for optimal clearance and breakover, stuff like that. Overall, great adjustments as far as the chassis. So both of those two are actually super solid options as well. We have a Katana um, here locally that's been doing really well in the past couple class ones. It's been the Katana and Razor's Edge um, at our top for most of our local series. Um, all the way across there. Another couple good uh, class one setups uh, offer from Team Garage Act. They have their Shop Dog class one chassis, um, which is actually my sister's class one setup. She um, won a full Shop Dog anodized, custom anodized setup um, last year at King, Missouri, and she has been doing really, really good with it. It's actually made her enjoy class one a lot more, getting everything switched over to that. Uh, they also offer a class one version of their new Hog chassis, which being from Team Garage Act, obviously would be compatible with all of the Team Garage Act dual servo mounts, pan hard mounts, four motor mounts, and all their T cases. Um, and we have several guys down in Oklahoma that are running them locally, um, and they do absolutely phenomenal, and saw plenty of them at this last weekend at the Rocky Mountain Regional event. So two great, two more solid chassis options from Team Garage Act. Uh, next up here is a chassis that actually went ahead and picked up. This is the GKC1 chassis from GK Competition Chassis. I've ran GK chassis in the past. I had one on my class three last year uh, for quite some time, ran it in Crawl Plaza, did really good. And then with the, again, like with the new rules and everything coming out, being able to offer chassis in different material, um, GK was able to jump into the class one game here. And this is their first class one chassis here. It also has plenty of shock adjustment and link adjustments um, for the setup. Um, and John is a super awesome guy, super helpful, um, really good driver too. Several of these in action this last weekend, um, and they just put in work. Here they do have compatibility with dual servo mounts, pan hard mounts, stuff like that. And they are compatible with uh, Team Garage Hack Ford motor mounts here. So you can get your Ford motor mount and your TK set up and everything looks good there. Really nice small belly here for that additional clearance and everything else like that. And um, in addition to just the chassis rails, it does come with different shock keys and towers and stuff like that. So you can add on here, put a, and you can put additional shock towers here in the rear or the front if you need to, uh, depending on your shocks and setup. So definitely, I think a really solid um, class one chassis, especially for uh, the first class one chassis. This thing really rock solid, has tons of versatility and adjustability, so rock solid. We will actually probably be building this class one here um, at a later date. We're going to I think jumped the kiddo into class one this upcoming year. So this is going to be his future class one setup as soon as I recover from some parts and a couple builds and get going on that. Next chassis here, um, we've seen this chassis before. This is the Everest chassis from XORC. Now we've seen this is my previous class three chassis um, and my class three is still an XO. I just happened to win one of the L Captain uh, chassis from XO while I was at the event. So I swapped that chassis to my class three and pulled this out. Also knowing the fact that I needed to build a class one. So I do have plenty of drive time in with this chassis, even though it's been class three, I do know the chassis. I've seen how it drives and everything like that. And this is forward based chassis design. Like I was mentioning in the beginning, instead of the skid being more centered, it is more forward here. In addition uh, to being forward based, it of course has the mounts here for uh, Team Garage Act Ford motor mount compatibility. They have their own dual servo mounts. 
and pan hard mounts for this chassis as well. And in addition to being offered in aluminum, it is also available in carbon fiber. Uh, but since I already have this one, this is actually probably going to be my class one build we are working on here shortly. So that right there is just a quick list and rundown of some of the chassis that I was looking, knowing that I had to build a class one, or even if I was looking, if I hadn't sold mine and was looking for a future class one build, you know, that right there, that is my list of chassis that really had my eye. They had everything that I was looking for. Small belly clearance, for motor mount compatibility, obviously dual servo mounts, and versatility with the chassis and overall low profile of the chassis is spot on where I want. I Like I said, I like everything to get that chassis nice and low. I keep everything, I want everything as close to these frame rails in line as I can, and the shorter, lower profile of the chassis means the lower I can get a body down as well. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I know as of currently, I know there is one in, I know there are several in the wild and they will be coming, but I think currently the XO may be the only forward based class one chassis out there currently. Um, like I said, I could be mistaken. There may be one other one out there and I know there are prototypes out in the wild um, and even one here locally of another one that is coming here in the near future. Um, but as of right now, um, this is the only one out there. So we're going to officially put the class one XO Everest into a class one and see how it does. I think it's gonna be a great build. So like I said, all those chassis options, they nailed everything. The belly clearance, forward based, all the mounting abilities, adjustability. There are several other um, class one companies and chassis out there that I just did not mention. Just It's just that I don't have a whole lot of first-hand experience with a lot of these other ones or even seeing the drive. A few others that I know that are really good. Um, the crawl space, their um, game changer and contenders, whichever one is their class one. Obviously that is a really well proven and driven platform, as well as Northwest Scale Design RC. Um, they make a class one chassis, and I believe they also make a specialized in a short wheelbase class one chassis as well. Um, there is, I think, a, one or two guys in Oklahoma that run that chassis, and I did see uh, several of us last weekend at the uh, Rocky Mountain Regional event, and they look great. The uh, chassis always look great, and they always put out some killer builds and some special, like, one-off, like, custom full body builds that are always really cool. In the meantime, I said, that is my... That is my like kind of class one wish list and what I look for in chassis and stuff like that. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Any comments, questions, anything like that, as always, put them down below. Uh, do my best to get everything answered. Uh, so until next time, when we actually get down and build a new class one, I hope everyone has a great one. Be well and crawl on.